All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going over how to set up a Synology NAS for video editing with Final Cut Pro. And we're going to go over the entire workflow. And this is gonna be fairly generic, so really, this is how it works across any video editing file server, TrueNAS, QNAP, whatever you've got. This is going to be pretty much the basics there because in all honesty, the overall setup is the same for everything. So a NAS differs from a regular external hard drive in that it is network attached and it is therefore shared. So whenever you're video editing on a NAS and the reason you video edit on a NAS rather than like a local hard drive is the fact that you have the ability to have multiple editors being able to access the same pool of resources. With Final Cut Pro specifically, only one editor can actually have the exact project open at a time, but you can easily close one editor's computer down and immediately open it back up on another editor, and it is seamless. What we're gonna be talking about today is a local video editing workflow. So we're not gonna be going over a remote video editing workflow. That's where the editors are not actually in the office. But one of my favorite ways to kind of combine a local video editing workflow and a remote video editing workflow or little Mac minis. Essentially what you can do, and actually why I've got this guy right here, is you can set them up as Parsec servers. And essentially you just get Mac minis for your remote editors. And instead of them actually pulling the footage to their local computers, they just log into your Mac mini and do all of the editing through that with Parsec. And I've got a full tutorial in that exact setup and workflow coming later on. So subscribe if you'd like to see that. And also while we're at it, I do this professionally for a ton of video production houses. So check out the link in the description if you'd like to hire me to set this up for y'all. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the simple workflow where all of your editors' computers are hooked up to the same local network. And ideally it is either 2.5 gigabit or a 10 gigabit network. I have a 10 gigabit dongle right here that we're gonna be using but this also would work just as well for the most part with a 2.5 gigabit dongle and I am hooked up to a 10 gigabit switch. If you're not familiar with what that is, I've got a link down in the description below that goes over all of that because it's fairly complex, but the basics are you need a 10 gigabit switch, a 10 gigabit card for your NAS, and a 10 gigabit adapter for whatever computers you've got. For example, this Mac mini, I got the $100 upgrade that has the 10 gigabit port in it. So it comes with a 10 gigabit ethernet port and all Mac studios come with 10 gigabit network ports as well by default. But if you're on a laptop, these adapters work well and I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description below to all of those things. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and logged in and I actually have two different storage pools here. One is composed of all SSDs and one is composed of hard drives. So if you're really working with heavy codecs and you want the absolute best performance, having an all SSD NAS pool is really great. But in all honesty, unless you've got more than five editors hitting it at the exact same time, you generally can get sufficient performance out of hard drives. The only thing you really might notice is that if you've got a lot of editors scrubbing through the timeline at the same time, specifically whenever you're scrubbing through a timeline it tends to be the time you're hitting the hard drives the hardest, you may notice that you just don't get as smooth of frames as you would if you had SSDs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a shared folder here on that SSD, call it edit demo on that SSD. Honestly, you've probably already got a shared folder set up. and you would give it permission to all of your editors who you'd like to access. I really recommend creating a different user on the NAS for every single one of your editors. Even if you trust them all, it's just really useful to be able to view logs and see, okay, who deleted that file? And so it's not even about blaming them, but just informing them of what happened. It kind of, it makes logging and debugging a lot easier. So now that's gonna be our edit folder. And it's always a great idea to have an archive folder, especially if you've got SSDs and hard drives, because now once our projects are done, we can just move them to that archive folder. If you'd like to see my in-depth setup on setting up this 2423, I actually have a link down in the description below that I basically go through and set the entire thing up exactly as I like to for video production houses. So check that out. 
Now, the one thing we are going to tweak here is under file services. We're going to do some tweaking to get the best possible performance out of it. And we are going to be connecting via SMB. We're not going to be using NFS or AFP for this. SMB has the best performance for Final Cut Pro and honestly, all video editing software. Transfer log, you probably want to leave this on for just delete and rename. If you add write, and especially read, it will start to have a little bit of a performance impact. And we're going to come into our advanced settings. And what we're going to make sure to do is have durable handles, opportunistic locking, VFS modules, asynchronous read, and you can play around with SMB multi-channel if you've got multiple network connections, but for most people, you probably do not need to enable SMB multi-channel unless you really do need faster and faster speeds or you wanna have like two one gigabit connections. So these right here are your ideal settings. And one last thing I will generally recommend adding in is this enable file fast clone. That way, if you clone a project, it will actually instant copy. That means that it will not take up twice the space on disk and it will be able to copy that one terabyte project instantaneously. So it's really useful and you're pretty much gonna forget about it because it just saves you space and just runs really efficiently. Finally, make sure you set up snapshots, cover that in a zillion other videos, but that way if anybody accidentally deletes anything, we can go in and undo it. So I would normally for video editing, set up a snapshot every hour And for retention policy, keep all snapshots for like 14 days and maybe a snapshot of the day for the last 30 days. I'm really blazing over this because it's not really the purpose of this video. It's very Synology specific, but making sure to have snapshots on is really useful to have. So I cover all this in much more in depth than other videos, but just from the basics, always make sure to add in those snapshots because editors will always accidentally delete the wrong file or save over somebody else's work. And if you have a snapshots on, it's like a two second fix. All right, so now we are all set up and we are ready to start editing. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my 10 gigabit dongle into my laptop. And once I do that, I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi connection right here. The reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure that we are only connected to this computer, to the NAS via wired 10 gigabit ethernet. We do not want a chance for the network connection to be going over Wi-Fi. And so the easiest way to achieve that is to turn Wi-Fi off. Mac OS loves to hang on to connections. So sometimes you might be having just horrible editing performance and you realize that it's just because the NAS is connected via Wi-Fi, even though you're plugged in wired 10 gigabit. So that is something I really recommend having. And the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is just open up Finder. And from within Finder, we're going to go into network and open up this RS2423, and I've already signed in here. And now we're just going to click on edit-demo. And if you see in the sidebar over here, this shows that the server is actually connected. If you want to set that up in Finder, you come into Settings, General, Show Connected Servers on Desktop. That's personally what I like to do, and that way whenever edit is connected, we can clearly see it there. Then we'll just go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro and we're going to create a new project. And we can put the project directly onto this. So what I always like to do, but really it's up to you however you want to organize it. I like to create a new folder and put our project within that. All right, so now we just have our project and it's gonna work exactly as we expect it to. The one difference is whenever we're importing media, we have two options. Within Final Cut Pro, you have two options to import media, and they are shown on the sidebar right here. We can either copy it to our library or leave the files in place. And this is really just a choice you need to make. Personally, we manually copy our media to the NAS and then leave files in place. I've just found that that gives me more robust options and that way you can have two libraries referencing the same media at the same time without duplicating files. So we always leave the files in place. But if you're doing that, you need to make sure to first copy them to the NAS before importing them 
because then they will only work locally. So if I were to leave files in place and copy it from my C drive, from my internal Mac OS movies folder, it would work great on this computer right now. But if I were to close it and another editor were to open it, obviously they do not have my same movies folder and they would have missing media. So if you are going to leave files in place, what I generally do is come into our folder right here. And for each video, I go in and I create a new folder called media. And I will then copy all of those files into it. So now the media exists on the server. So now when I go ahead and import my media, I can safely leave my files in place, import them, and all other editors will also have access to it. And the way you can tell is if you click on one of these guys right here and the eye dropper, you can see the location is edit demo. If this says Macintosh HD, you know that if you were to close it and another editor open it, they would not be able to see it. If it says in library, it will also work. So now we can just edit exactly as we would. I'm actually going to stop that import transcoding and just go ahead and create a new project. And now I'm able to scrub through this timeline really buttery smooth. It's really easy to be able to do all of your editing directly off here. And if I were to close this and open it on my desktop right here or another editor come in, they would be able to just immediately pick up where I left off. And the only thing that we can't do is another editor would not be able to open this project right now. If they tried to, it would say, error, we cannot. Somebody else has this open. And it just kind of works like that. Now, media assets are really easy because you just point to them and everything's great. There is a slight difference when it comes to effects and plugins. All editors need the same effects and plugins installed on their same computers for this all to work buttery smooth. And this is true if you were to carry around an external hard drive and plug in. What you need to make sure to do is make sure if you have any custom effects that you are always syncing them across all of your editor's machines. So specifically, I've got two LUTs right here that I use. What I really recommend doing is right click reveal in Finder and you are going to find this pro apps folder right here under this long string. What I do is anytime I modify any of these guys right here, I will always go in, copy this pro apps folder to all of the different computers in the network that need to access these files and need to be editable. Then everyone else can use them. So if I did not have this and I used one of these LUTs, when another editor went to open it, who did not have the same pro apps folder as I did, well, then they would not be able to actually see that LUT. They would see a rendered version, but they would not see the full version. And so that's why it's really important. Make sure to always copy this one thing in. And it's pretty easy. If you don't, you will very much know. And that's pretty much it. Final Cut Pro will work great and you can just edit right on through it as if it was on a local machine. You will always have a little bit worse performance editing on NAS versus a local NVMe, but what you gain is so much more because now multiple people can just be working on projects back and forth and back and forth and you never need to worry about where assets are stored because everything lives on the NAS. And you've also got a great way to easily back up all of your projects because everything lives in one place and it just makes it for a really easy workflow. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this setup. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below as well. And have a good one, bye.